So Luke 19, if you got a Bible or you want to follow along with me, it, may, it might be too cold for you to read, I don't know. But Luke 19, and it's verses 28 to 44. And so I call this God Loves Israel. Uh, Luke 19, uh, 28 to 44. Uh, the, God loves Israel. The world clearly doesn't, <laughs> but God does. Uh, I'd say most people have a nonsensical hatred uh, for this country and the people in it. Um, and, and some people get this wrong because they, they think that like the, the Jewish people did something uh, 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 special to get God's favor. Or they're better uh, than everyone else, but that's not true. There's not, nobody has inherent goodness, um, but it's just because God loves them and he wanted to show his glory through them. Um, he just chose uh, the Jewish people and so they are his special treasure, right? Uh, and this, this section of the Bible that I'm going to read demonstrates his heart towards his people and really all people because he sent his only son, Jesus, uh, for them first to the Jews, and then to the rest of the world. Um, uh, Abraham told, uh, uh, told uh, God told Abraham that he would bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse them. And so it's wise to be on the side of blessing, isn't it? Amen. Well, I'm going to start reading uh, verse 28, and again, it's Luke 19. It says, And when he had said this, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet that he sent uh, two of his disciples saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you uh, enter it you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord uh, has need of him. So he's probably on the other side of that hill there um, because Beth Page is over there and so is Bethany. And, uh, you know, Jesus stayed there a lot. That was where Mary and Martha lived and Lazarus. Uh, Dima mentioned that uh, the other day. And also Simon the leper. And so Jesus spent a lot of time in those homes when he was in this, this area. But now he's leaving there and coming down here because he's going to do something that's one of the greatest fulfillments of prophecy in the whole Bible. Uh, so he sends them to get a donkey. Like, a donkey? Well, that's what he sends them for. So I'll keep reading. Verse 35 says, Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their clothes on the colt, and they sent Jesus on, set Jesus on him. And as they went, many spread their clothes on the road. Praise the Lord, he made this stop being windy. <laughs> Well, this is, this is what they would do for a king in that day, right? In the ancient world, it was a way to honor uh, the king um, uh, to do these kind of things. Uh, well, John tells us in his gospel that many people also cut down palm tree branches and laid them uh, on the road. So that's where we get Palm Sunday from. That's what this scripture is, Palm Sunday. Um, this is actually a fulfillment of Zechariah 9.9. Uh, 9. And this is what Zechariah the prophet said. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So hundreds of years before this event happened that we're reading about in, uh, where are we at, Luke? Yeah, Luke, um, that uh, the Lord let everybody know through Zechariah that this was going to happen. 
Now, as I said, typically a victorious king came into a city uh, escorted by the citizens of his kingdom and his army. And as he entered, they would sing songs of praise and acknowledge him as a conqueror, right? But Jesus is entering Jerusalem in a completely different way, in a humble way, lowly, right? He said, riding on uh, a donkey. But the prophecy, for those who were paying attention, the prophecy was there so you'd make the connection. Oh, this, uh, I'll, this is how you recognize him. <laughs> if he's like this and not entering Jerusalem like a conquering king, right? Verse 37 says, Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, so right here, right? Uh, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed, let's say it together. Uh, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest, right? So that's a, a quote from Psalm 118. Psalm 118 is a great one to read for Palm Sunday because it prophesies of all these things. Um, so they're coming over the hill and everybody's hooting and hollering <laughs> because of what this means, you know. The other uh, three Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, and John, uh, they all say Hosanna. The people were shouting uh, Hosanna. And again, uh, that's from Psalm 118 because that's what it says. Uh, uh, Matthew adds Hosanna to the son of David. So it's, that means save now, right? And so uh, Luke doesn't record that part, but the others did. And what, what it's saying is that um, it's time for the savior of mankind uh, to come right now. And of course, he is, right? That's what we believe. So they're all excited uh, that Jesus is going to establish his kingdom uh, in Jerusalem. Now, see, they thought that it was going to deliver them from the Roman Empire, right? And I think maybe Brian mentioned it before. In a sense, it did because inward, we're all delivered, right, from oppression and, and the world system and all those kind of things. But um, they were expecting something different. Uh, and what they don't know is this conquering king here is going to go to the cross and die for their sins first. Uh, and that's why, that's why it's a great day. <laughs> that's why Hosanna is so important. That's how he saves, right? He brings the way to have peace with God. And that's so remarkable. Okay, here come the killjoys. Verse 39 and 40. It says, And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd saying, Teacher! Rebuke your disciples. <laughs> but he answered and said to them, I tell you that even that if these should keep quiet, silent, the stones would immediately cry out. So Jesus is saying, look, don't shush them. <laughs> don't shush them. If you do, the rocks are going to say it. I heard this guy, a pastor named Sandy Adams. He said, uh, if those stones cried out, that would have been some great rock music. <laughs> <laughs> So the Pharisees were looking for the Messiah, too. Everyone here is looking for the Messiah. Um, but it doesn't look like they were looking for this particular uh, one. Uh, because they know what it means, what they're shouting. That they're saying, this is the Son of God. And they were like, tell him to stop it. <laughs> right? And so, um, but God, he, the Lord, he won't, he, won't, he won't shush them. He won't stop them from worshiping him. Because, listen, if we don't... Somebody else will. As a matter of fact, he said that something, something else will. And here's a key. I think this is one of the keys of this whole thing. Um, there's always so someone telling God's people to keep it down. They're doing it all the time today, aren't they? And nothing, and here, here's why, because nothing frustrates the enemies of God like singing to him, praising him, singing about him, talking to people, sharing the gospel. Uh, it just frustrates the enemy. But God enjoys the praise. You can tell just what we, we read there. And it's good for you and I uh, to do it. Just like we sang here today, even though we're cold. And okay, we'll, we'll sing one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's good for us to do. The devil hates worship of God. And that's why there's so much spiritual warfare uh, 
here. Um, when your mind is set on God, think about it. It's not set on destruction. It's not set on hatred. It's set on, um, you know, joy and hope and love and, and, and peace. And he hates uh, all that. Um, uh, verse 41 says, Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. So just imagine with your mind's eye, Jesus riding the donkey, and he's coming down, and he's drawn near the city, right? And he weeps over it. Uh, this is the heart of God, right? Remember what I said when we started? He loves Israel. And so he's brokenhearted, and you can imagine why, because most of the people, their hearts were far from him. They were lost, and that breaks um, his heart. It also shows you that God is not happy to judge the world, <laughs> right? He, it's not his first. He wants to have mercy uh, on people. Uh, Ezekiel 33, 11 says, Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why should you die, O house of Israel? So that's the heart of God, right? He loves Israel, and he loves all people. <laughs> um, and so the, that judgment of the unbelievers is not a pleasurable thing. He will do it because he's just and right and true and good, but that's not his fur. He sent his son to rescue people first. Well, let me finish up here, verse 42, 44. It says, saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this your day, remember, he's, ex he's explaining why he's weeping over Israel, the things that make up, make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will uh, come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. So, uh, what, what we know, and we saw a little bit in the video we saw yesterday, uh, was that in the Davidson Center, if you remember, that it was prophesied in the book of Daniel in chapter 9 that when uh, Artaxerxes gave the, gave the uh, uh, commandment to rebuild Jerusalem to Nehemiah, that that started the clock. And then 483 years later, and that's what Daniel told us, that that would be when the Messiah would come. Well, people have done the math here, and uh, it's pretty evident that the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem is the day that was prophesied from the rebuilding uh, of, of, of the Temple of Jerusalem. So you can look into that yourself. Sir Robert Anderson wrote a really good book uh, on that. You can ask Jesus when you get to heaven if that's accurate or not, but it looks like it's that day is what it's talking about because... Remember we talked about Psalm 118 when I started? Psalm 118 said, um, this is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Well, he's talking about that day that Jesus wrote. You know, we think that's like uh, any beautiful day is the day the Lord has made and rejoice. And you know, you can, but that's not what that scripture means. The scripture means it's the day when Hosanna would come into Israel. That's the day that we rejoice. Save now. <laughs> and that's what he was coming there to do in that holy week. Um, and then, of course, Daniel, the very next thing he says in chapter 9 is the Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself. For, for you and me, he was cut off. So that's, that's that, you know, um, <laughs> the prediction that the Messiah in Isaiah 53 would be a suffering uh, Messiah as well as a victorious uh, king. And so uh, it's important to remember that Jesus has to die for our sins so that we can have forgiveness. And then he will be raised three days later and we will have victory uh, over death. And those last things that he mentions there, they happen in 70 AD. Uh, Jesus predicted how uh, the Romans would rout the city and burn it and push the stones over the wall. We saw them yesterday, right? Uh, and uh, uh, all these things prophesied, predicted, and, and uh, all these things that uh, Jesus went through just because God loves Israel. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's been able to keep it going all this time. And, and of course, we can't forget that God loves all people. He loves you. He loves your children. 
and he just wants to bless people. So we can just rejoice that here standing on the Mount of Olives and remember what Jesus did, that lowly Savior coming in here as a conquering king. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your grace and your goodness towards us. Thank you that you love, you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you for these reminders. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.